What we're going to do now is to look at a QRP transceiver project. It appeared in Sprat, issue number 160, and is by Gerard Kelly, G4FQN. It's basically a 40 meter CW direct conversion transceiver. But what we're going to do is we're going to look at the circuit, look at all the frequency dependent parts of the circuit, and discuss some other considerations that you'd need to think about if you're going to convert this project to another band. The first thing we do is orient ourselves to the circuit. Here's 13.8 volts on receive, 13.8 volts on transmit, there's the speaker, and somewhere, just here, is the antenna. You also want to trace the signal paths on both transmit and receive. Let's start off with the transmitter section first. Having a look at where signals start, in other words the VXO, it's on 7 meg, which happens to be the operating frequency. There's two crystals and a series coil, so it should have a reasonable pulling range. Now if you need to convert that to another band, then you'll need to substitute the crystals to whatever the frequency you want, 10, 14 or even 3.5 meg. And if you want reasonable pulling range, you definitely need to experiment with that series coil and possibly also the tuning capacitor. If you don't, then your pulling range will be different. You may get excessive pulling range, which causes the VXO to be unstable, or you might not get enough range, which makes it a lot harder to get contacts. The buffer stage is untuned, so I don't think we need to do anything there. There's a FET for the keying, another FET for the driver, and here's a tuned circuit in the driver's drain connection. This is almost certainly frequency dependent, especially when you see that CX there. Probably something you need to read about in the text. Having a look at the final amplifier stage, in the collector circuit of that is just a simple RF choke, 12 turns. You probably don't need to do much with that if you're moving it upper band or below a band. Here we have the transmit low pass filter. It probably cuts off at about 8 MHz, so it's okay for a 7 MHz rig as described. But if you were going to modify the rest of the circuit, let's say 14 MHz, and neglect the bandpass filter, then you're going to get very low output power because it will all be attenuated in the filter. Or, if you're converting it to 3.5 meg, you'd still get reasonable output power, but the output signal would be dirty, and most likely have harmonics. So you need to make sure the bandpass low pass filter is okay, and matches the rest of the transmitter. Having a look at the receiver, I note there's a diode balance mixer, that uses a fair amount of RF drive, and so there's an amplifier stage there to help it to provide the local oscillator signal. They look broadband, also 8 turns trifiler, another 8 turns trifiler. You need to look at the details in the parts list, but that's likely to be on a ferrite and broadband. So, if you're changing the frequency of the transceiver, then you can leave those well alone. What you can't leave alone though, is the selectivity provided in the front end. In this case, there's a single tuned circuit between where the signal comes in from the antenna, via an attenuator pot, into the balance mixer here. This is a narrow band tuned circuit and you'll definitely need to change it if you're going to get the receiver to operate. You need to be able to peak it on the received frequency. Again, as we discussed before, take off some turns or reduce the capacitance for a higher frequency band and add turns and increase capacitance for a lower frequency band. The rest of the circuit is audio circuitry and is not RF frequency dependent, so you won't need to make any changes there. Even if you've changed all the frequency determining parts of the circuit, does that necessarily mean you'll have a functioning transceiver? Not necessarily. There's a few subtleties that we glossed over before, particularly when it comes to gain in the receiver and transmitter. One of these subtleties is in the transmitter power output stage. Notice how the transistors specified are either a BFY51 or 2N3866. Both of them are OK on 7 MHz, which is the transmitter's design frequency. However, at different frequencies, their performance varies. The 2N3866 is a good VHF transistor, so it would be fine if you're using it on 14 MHz. Whereas the BFY51 cuts off at around 10 or 14 MHz, its gain will be much lower there than on 7 or 3.5. And, 
So the output transistor in this case is critical if you're going to be modifying this rig to go to a higher HF band. Not so critical if you're going to go down to 80 or 160 meters with it. Gain characteristics were mentioned earlier. Transistors have higher gain at lower frequencies and lower gain at higher frequencies. Across the base to the earth of the final transistor is a 33 ohm resistor. Supposing we wanted to get a bit more out of that transistor, you might want to increase the 33 ohm resistor to say 47 or 68 ohms, and that may get you a bit more output power. Conversely, on a lower band like 1.8 or 3.5 meg, the whole thing may oscillate and take off. It may be hard to tame it. The transistor may be getting hot and your power meter may be indicating more than it should be. There may also be some broadband hash that you'll hear on adjacent frequencies. In this case, you might want to tame the beast down. You could do that by reducing the value of the 33 ohm resistor to say 27 ohm or 22 ohm. That will helpfully calm it down. As to the receiver, note that there is no amplification between the antenna and the diode balance mixer. In fact, there's an attenuator. That's okay on 7 meg, where the noise figure of the diode balance mixer, although high, is still enough to overcome the natural band noise. On higher frequency bands like 14 meg, that may not be the case, and you might want some extra gain. You might need a FET RF preamp and possibly an extra front end tuned circuit to deliver that. We've covered a lot of stuff today. Hopefully it's given you some idea as to the things you need to think about when you're converting a receiver, transmitter or transceiver from one band to another. If it's only a small excursion in band, especially if down to a lower frequency, it's fairly easy. If it's a large excursion, especially significantly higher in frequency, then you're probably better off to look at another design, more suited to what you want to achieve. In the next part, I'll go into a bit more detail, including SUPHET receivers and SSB transmitters.